dear students there are two important veins in the neck one is the external jugular vein and the other is the internal jugular vein let us discuss about the external jugular vein the word jugulum is derived from latin which means throat or collar bone so because these veins are located in the neck they are called the jugular veins the superficial of the two jugular veins that is the external and internal in the neck are of clinical importance between the two more superficial is the external jugular vein when compared to internal jugular vein in this picture you can see the sternomastoid muscle and you can see the external jugular vein crossing obliquely over the sternomastoid muscle and deeper is the internal jugular vein so the external jugular vein it collects blood from outside the skull and from the deep parts of the face it will receive the blood coming to the formation course and termination of external jugular vein it is formed by the union of posterior auricular vein which you can see it coming behind the auricle and posterior division of retromandibular vein so the retromandibular vein is formed within the substance of parotid gland by the union of the superficial temporal and maxillary veins and at the lower end of the parotid gland it divides into an anterior division and a posterior division the posterior division of retromandibular vein joins the posterior auricular vein just behind the angle of the mandible to form the external jugular vein that is about its formation then later on it will descend obliquely across the sternocleido mastoid muscle you can see it in this picture and then it pierces the deep fascia of neck above the clavicle to enter the posterior triangle of the neck after piercing the deep fascia it will go to the middle of clavicle and when it is in contact with the deep fascia at the point where it pierces the walls of the vein will be adherent to the deep fascia then it will join the subclavian vein behind the middle of clavicle to form the brachiocephalic vein so it begins behind the angle of mandible by the union of posterior auricular and posterior division of retromandibular veins then runs obliquely across the sternocleidomastoid muscle then pierces the deep fascia of neck and it will join with the subclavian vein behind the middle of clavicle to form the brachiocephalic vein coming to the tributaries of the external jugular vein so they are the posterior auricular vein the posterior division of retro mandibular vein the posterior external jugular vein which you are seeing in this picture then the transverse cervical vein in the posterior triangle you are seeing 
then the suprascapular vein also then the anterior jugular vein so these are the tributaries of the external jugular vein coming to the surface marking of the external jugular vein take a point on the angle of mandible then take another point on the middle of the clavicle and join these two points that will mark the position of the external jugular vein coming to the applied anatomy of the external jugular vein so the visibility of this vein is less in children and in women as the subcutaneous tissue is thicker and in the case of obese persons it's difficult to see the veins even when you ask the person to hold the breath so in thin individuals if you ask him to hold his or her breath then you can see the external jugular veins but not in the case of obese persons and enlarged and tortuous vein so in the case of professional singers because of prolonged periods of raised intrathoracic pressure during singing there will be enlarged and tortuous veins so in this picture we are seeing a enlarged vein you are seeing prominent vein you are seeing the external jugular vein so the engorgement of these veins filled with blood will be seen in patients with the right heart failure or in case of raised venous pressure so you can see the visibly prominent external jugular vein in this picture if there is injury to the deep fascia of neck about 1 inch above the clavicle with a sharp object then there is the possibility of injury to the external jugular vein the advantage of vein is adherent to the margins of the opening in the deep fascia which it pierces so approximately about 2.5 cm above the clavicle it pierces the deep fascia and the advantage of this vein is adherent to the margins of the opening and when there is injury the vein is prevented from collapsing because of its attachment to the deep fascia the lumen is retracted and air can enter into it resulting in air embolism which is fatal to prevent the wound should be occluded with the finger whenever there is injury in this picture we can see the external jugular vein starting from the lower angle of the parotid gland passing over the sternomastoid and over the posterior triangle the external jugular vein serves as a useful venous manometer so normally when the patient is lying at a horizontal angle of 30 degrees the blood in the external jugular vein will fill up nearly one third of its way in the neck if the patient sits up it will fall down and it becomes invisible behind the clavicle so it can be used as a venous manometer for measuring the jugular venous pressure the external jugular vein can also be used for catheterization but it is difficult to pass the catheter 
because of the presence of walls and because of the tortuosity of the vein. In external jugular vein catheterization, the right vein is commonly used because it is in line with the superior vena cava. The site of external jugular vein catheterization is midway between the level of cricoid cortilage and clavicle. That is the site of catheterization of the external jugular vein. And the catheter should be passed during inspiration at which time the walls will be open. So that is about the formation, the termination, the tributaries and the clinical importance of the external jugular vein.